I'm Dr. Gellies, Director of the Specialty Contact Lens Division of the CLEI Center for Keratoconus, and I'm here to discuss with you today about the visual complications that occur in keratoconus and understanding how those visual changes are impacted by interventions such as glasses, traditional contact lenses, and specialty contact lenses. Before we start, we need to understand the optics of a normal cornea. In a normal eye, the cornea is the front surface of the eye that allows for refracting of light or bending of light to be able to create a crisp, distortion-free image on the retina. If we take a look at the image below, we see all the light rays coming into the eye, hitting the cornea, and then bending to a single focal point on the retina. In keratoconus, that shape is no longer regular and smooth, but rather is irregular and bulging or protruding. And this irregular shape causes scattering of light. You can see in that diagram off to the right that the light rays bend in different directions, creating multiple focal points on the retina, which creates visual static decreases the vision and causes severe distortion to the vision as the disease gets worse. If we take a look at optical aberrations, which is a measurement of the visual noise in the system or the amount of irregularity in the vision, we look at a normal cornea first and what we see is a wavefront sensor off to the right and what happens is when we project that wavefront into the eye the reflection of that wavefront coming back out of the eye is non aberrated so you can see that we have the same regular arrangement of those points on that grid whereas when we do the same thing to a keratoconic individual you can see how those points are now no longer in focus and no longer in that same regular arrangement. Instead, they're deformed, out of focus, blurred, scattered, and that creates an aberrated wavefront, which gives us that map that we're seeing above. That map is demonstrating a very common visual profile for individuals with keratoconus and that profile is called vertical coma. Now, those optical aberrations are the result of having variable focusing power across that cornea, because in some areas that cornea is more curved and in other areas that cornea is flatter. And what that causes is these higher order aberrations. If we take a look at the images on the right, these are images of higher order aberrations. If we take a look at the very top, uh, what we see is a perfect point of light. As we add different aberrations in there, that point of light is no longer a single point, but can be either a point with a halo around it, a point with flared out lines coming from it, um, all these different shapes on that point based on the type of higher order aberration that we induce to that point. And what we find is in individuals with keratoconus, they have about five and a half times the amount of higher order aberrations uh, in comparison to a normal cornea. So what does that mean for the vision that you see as an individual with keratoconus? Well, that means that we experience more glare more starbursts, more halos around lights, more double vision or overlapping of those images. And all of these symptoms are typically worse in darker situations where your pupil is larger and allows more light into the eye. The more light coming in, the more light that's scattered, the more issues that we have. Now, why do spectacles and traditional contact lenses not correct vision in individuals with keratoconus. Well, in individuals with advanced levels of keratoconus, the reason why a spectacle or a traditional contact lens does not correct the vision is because we're not doing anything to change the shape of that cornea. 
So no matter what, excuse me, no matter what prescription or intervention we put in front of the eye, that wave front may be corrected coming from the back of the glasses, but then it still has to hit that irregular keratoconic cornea and then the light scatters from there. When we use a specialty contact lens, such as a scleral lens, a RGP, a hard lens, a hybrid lens, or a specialty soft lens for keratoconics, what it does is it functionally replaces the front surface of the cornea, giving us a nice smooth surface. And what that does is that brings those focal points back together to give us that single crisp focus back that we were once missing. So when we go back to our wavefront aberrometry, when we take an individual who is keratoconic but now is wearing a specialty contact lens, we can see that their wavefront is significantly reduced. So they see significantly less visual noise or visual static in the system because of the, uh, because of the regular surface that's created by that specialty contact lens. In that center picture, what you see is a severe keratoconic wearing a, a scleral contact lens. In that scleral contact lens, you can see the very front surface of that is that first white line. And you can see how that has a nice even curvature with it. That second white line there off to the right is the cornea itself. And you can see how that's irregularly shaped. So you can see the masking quality. So you can see the masking quality of that scleral lens in comparison to that keratoconic cornea. With that, I'll thank you for your time. Join us next week with our next blog. Thank you.